serious people who have had distressing paranormal activity in their homes. What's your story? Redditor 1, this probably doesn't fall under extremely distressing, but I'll put my story down the earliest memory I have is of an experience with an apparition. Based on what I know I was no more than 3 years old when I saw it parents didn't believe me, always had some explanation for me we moved houses and tiny things would happen here and there, but once again my parents always chalked it up to an overactive imagination there was a full body apparition that both my brother and I saw as it walked past a doorway while we were home alone fast forward to getting married and moving into an old apartment. Things start to heat up a little bit bins would get flipped over and the contents dumped on the floor things would slide off of the back of our vanity about 18 inches deep and fly 3 feet to hit the footboard of our bed, not gently more activity than I had experienced before but still not a lot we moved into an almost brand new apartment. And while one or two things happened things calmed down significantly then we moved in with my in-laws while my husband went to school cue the real events the house would go through periods of high activity particularly centered around me my husband would hear me calling him from another room, I wouldn't be calling him he would see me pass by the bottom of the stairs as he was coming down and would follow me all the way around the corner into the far room only to dead end with the room empty I came in from the chicken coop to him upset because I'd been calling him from all over the house I'd been outside the whole time it would make one of the dogs go absolutely feral, barking and snarling at nothing I would have small, soft items thrown at me I would hear clapping and walking around the house and the dogs would go looking for what made the noise here's the main story my husband was working nights and I was home alone on the farm while the in-laws were out of state on a trip one of the dogs goes into an episode, staring at nothing in the middle of the living room absolutely losing it, rabbit dog I can't get her to calm down usually a light touch on the back will snap her out of it, but I could not call her off this time I finally go to my room to take a breather and I hear her stop maybe 15 minutes later she's at it again I can't describe how terrifying it is to see her like this, like I said absolutely feral, I go halfway up the stairs and I'm talking to her through the banister, finally get her to come over to me and stop barking she keeps looking next to me at the top of the stairs, then a huge slam on the baby gate there happens, rattling the gate and the banister I ignore it cause I've heard that's the best thing to do when something's right next to you the dog barks but I get her stopped again then right in my line of sight I see a pen slid forcefully off the table, flying multiple feet before hitting the ground the dog immediately runs to attack, and goes into another fit looking at something next to the table I start to lose it, Immediately go back downstairs to my bedroom I sit on my bed next to my cat napping there he stands up and comes to me since I'm upset and crying I hear the dog move back to barking in the living room. Closer to my room a minute later my cat turns to look at the doorway. His back raises up ears pinned back and his hair stands on end looking straight at the doorway I ran out of the house at that point that was the worst it ever got I have lots of other little stories though I just moved into a brand new house and knock on wood nothing yet I refuse to talk about paranormal activity allowed in any home I stay in, and I think subconsciously I pushed myself to only move into a new construction for fear of stirring anything in an existing house up with what I know about the experiences through my life compared with where I was staying. I've kind of begun to think I might be a poltergeist a new construction home was the only place I felt safe moving into so while my story isn't to the level of a horror movie, I'm happy to be out of old houses and apartments. Redditor 2, I've been a witness to many strange occurrences in our house over the years, many of which happened to my very skeptical friends as well. We cannot explain this. The strange occurrences mainly center around my father and sister, while my mother and me thankfully have only been peripheral witnesses. 1. When I was around 7 years old, me, my sister and our babysitter were watching TV when the blood completely drained from my sister's face she was 11 and she tries to scream but nothing is coming out. She then says she saw a small, hairy man walk through the living room right in front of us. She wouldn't stop crying. My mother thought she was making it up but my father was eerily quiet. 2. When I was about 14 my father was screaming at me to leave the glass sliding door alone, apparently I was violently pulling at it, screaming at him to open it. I wasn't at home at the time. 3. My best friend came to visit me, and this being South Africa, was waiting at the security gate of our house to let him in. He was calling my name and I was on the toilet. We both hear my dad saying he's on the toilet, he'll be right there. My blood froze. My father wasn't home. We had no idea what to make of it. 4. While another friend the biggest skeptic, 
I'd say was sleeping over, him, me and my sister were discussing my friend's girlfriend at the time. It was the middle of the evening, not too late and we were sitting in my sister's room. Something was violently throwing the chairs around in the kitchen. The sound was as clear as day. Thinking it was a burglar, we locked the door and pressed the alarm button. When the security guys arrive all the doors are locked and there s nothing amiss in the kitchen. This was truly frightening. 5. The whole family has heard a woman laughing and knocks on the doors. The TV switches on by itself, volume increases decreases on multiple televisions. Lights come on and off etc. We hear whispering at night, mostly indistinct but sometimes referencing us PSSSSSSS. My sister's name, PSSSSSSSSS. This was a weekly occurrence. 6. My father saw a small humanoid running up our stairs right around the time my sister saw the thing in our living room. He has also seen a woman walking around the house multiple times. 7. This happened about three years ago. My cousin was around eight years old and went inside the house to go get a swimming towel. She starts screaming and runs out of the house, face white as a sheet. She says there was a badly burnt child in my sister's room smiling at her. She was truly shaken and sticks by her story. She doesn't like to come visit anymore. These are just some of the weird shit that has happened in this house, and yes, my family are still living there. My father is an extremely quiet guy, to the point of it being painful, and not one to suffer fools, which makes me even more uneasy about all of this. We're not particularly religious or believers in the paranormal, but enough weird shit has happened to make me question this reality. Redditor 3, we live in an approximately 150-year-old farmhouse, with a cemetery across the road that hasn't seen a burial since 1870 apparently the records office burned down. So they lost the exact plot locations and just opened up another cemetery 300 feet west of us. About a week after moving in, my wife and I were eating dinner, and my phone which hadn't been touched in quite a while and was sitting on the kitchen counter says in Siri's voice you are in my realm. And nothing more. We both heard it clear as day, and there was no history of the phone saying it. Then my cat was absolutely relentless in getting me out of bed in the middle of the night at first I shrugged it off but then got thinking maybe something was on fire or whatever. She led me downstairs, nothing. I went outside to see if there was anyone out there, and it was the deadest silence I've ever heard in my life. I noped out of that and came back inside. When I went to go back upstairs, I stood in something cold and wet. I bent down to see what it was, and my feet were totally dry, it was just a very strange cold spot. When I stood up, the feeling of a hand on my shoulder was unmistakable. The cat was just starting at me very intently. TV remotes go missing constantly I think we've lost six now. I've had every single piece of furniture out of the TV room, as I renovated the whole thing, never found one. About a year and a half after moving in, I bumped into a former co-worker at a flea market who knew where I lived but hadn't been told about any of the occurrences. She said go introduce yourself to those people over there, they lived in your house in the 80s. So I did, and the first thing they asked was how is the ghost doing? They said it had a fondness for messing with the TV and would open doors sometimes at very useful times, like when carrying a bundle of firewood. And one more addition to the story, a good friend of mine who I met after moving here, and again, never mentioned any of this stuff to was standing in my driveway and just randomly said dude, there is some strong spirit activity here. Wow. Redditor 4. My childhood home was notoriously haunted. We moved into the house when I was around six and my brother was three. It started slow with him and I seeing weird things at night and constant nightmares. Things would go missing only to return a few day later. We would constantly hear people talking, footsteps, and doors slamming when no one was around. Over the years has started to escalate and there are a lot of stories so I have included a few. One parent was in their bedroom during a party when they heard a child running and the door to their walk-in closet creaked shut. She assumed it was me or my brother and went to open up the door. When she did some of the t-shirts that were hung close to the floor were swaying. Peeking out from behind them was a little girl she did not know. The little girl vanished before her eyes. I was home alone waiting for my BF to come over. I heard him call my name so I came out of my bedroom and headed towards the front door. 
When I came to the stairs that separated my room from the front door I saw this, thing. It almost resembled a person, pitch black, crawling up the stairs, it cracked its neck to look up at me and I ran. I called my BF and he wasn't there yet. I hid in my room until he came. The last one I'll put is after my family moved out we rented it for a while. The tenant complained of similar things that we experienced in our first few months there. He went out of town and left his dog in the garage. His friend came to check on it and the dog was missing. He later found the dog who was fine just scared locked in the crawl space that was completely separate from the garage and two closed doors away from where the dog was left. This crawl spaces was the worst place in the house for negative activity. Redditor 5, massive black dog appearing in my backyard, it smelled like rotting meat. I ran to my house and looked out the window, nothing it was gone. Had nightmares for weeks after. I told this to a co-worker and he told me that there used to be a man who lived in my neighborhood who raised dogs for dog fights and one day he didn't feed them. They got so hungry that they broke out of their cages and ate him. Don't know if it was connected to my event, but it was kind of freaky. Redditor 6, many years ago I had a Ford Escort I really loved. One day I noticed the back right wheel was missing a single lug nut. No biggie replaced. Soon though one is missing on the same wheel. I assume the thread is stripped, but the shiny new lug nut is still there. Different one missing. This keeps happening and I assume all the threads are stripped a little bit. I don't want to lose a wheel though so I get all new studs, go through the pain of driving the old ones out way harder than I thought it would be and get all new lug nuts to go with it. Before the week is out, I'm down one lug nut. I start checking my car every night and then again in the morning. Yep, disappearing overnight. Not on the ground either. Aha! I have a prankster. Feeling this is annoying but no big deal very small town I go sell some blood plasma a few times and then buy a big old bag of lug nuts. They keep vanishing and I keep replacing them. But then I notice one vanishes sometime after leaving for work and before I got home. Fallen off while driving? Weird. Coincidence? They're still occasionally vanishing overnight about once a week randomly. I start making marks in my owner's manual morning before I leave when I arrive at work when I leave for work when I get home. I check their tension frequently. Occasionally one is loose. This fits the random falling off but doesn't explain overnight disappearance. Sometimes it vanishes while I'm driving. Sometimes overnight. At least twice while in the parking lot at work. I'm beginning to feel very weird about it. It just doesn't add up. I keep writing stuff down as if that'll make it make sense. I carve symbols into the lug nut tops with a screwdriver to tell them apart heart, spade, diamond, club and it is definitely different ones vanishing. Not always the same location. I can't explain it. Finally I try a dangerous experiment. I simply let it run with 3-4 lug nuts. Cautiously at first, checking tension on the 3 remaining ones because I imagine the wheel falling off at highway speeds. But over time, nothing happens. I kept the car almost two full years after that and my back right will always just ran with three lug nuts. The only time I had one disappear was when I got new tires and the shop put a new one on. Once it vanished though, I let things be and it was always fine. Still no idea WTF that was. I don't know how disturbing it was really, but so odd. I am now curious what would have happened if I had had some kind of surveillance footage of the car at night. Redditor 7, I wouldn't say distressing, but it's a big reason I keep my bedroom door shut while sleeping, also a big reason I keep the lights on at night. When I was in middle school, I kept my bedroom door open one night. That night my father was out drinking or something. I say something, as he was cheating on my mother at this time so who's to say he didn't come back by the time I went to bed. So when I heard the front door slam shut in the middle of the night, I thought, dad's home. Then I went back to sleep as I heard him walk up the stairs to the living room. The house I lived in for context. Had stairs right as you entered through the front door or garage door, up to the living room and down to the basement. Then more stairs when you walked up, leading to the bedrooms on the third floor that were over the garage. Never heard him walk up to my parents' bedroom that was in view from my bedroom door. I felt something was watching me. I woke up slowly to see, what I presumed was my father in the doorway. 
I squinted at him because he plays jokes like this. Trying to scare me and my sisters. When I got a good look at the man in the doorway. I couldn't see any features. I went to wipe my eyes and get a better look at him. I stared at the man and two white eyes stared back. I realized this wasn't my father. I didn't scream, or jump back in fear. Instead I did what any sensible person would do. Cover my face and hide in my sheets. I heard the man walk over to my bed after I hid. I could feel him still staring at me. He was close enough I could hear him breathing. I just cried. Hoping it was all a dream, or a prank my dad was playing on me. I eventually cried myself to sleep. I woke up that morning scared out of my mind. To find my father sleeping on the couch. I didn't tell anyone about what happened at the time. I didn't have the best relationship with my father so I never approached him about it either when he woke up. However, I asked my mom when dad got home and she didn't know, as he never came to bed. I slept with my door closed from then on, when I would sleep on a couch or a room with no doors from that night onward. I always felt someone was watching me from the corner of the room. But as I got older it slowly stopped happening. He now seems to come back when I drive at night. Sometimes I think I see him in my back seat or on the sidewalk. So I think whatever this is. It's still attached to me. But I have never seen him as clearly as I saw him that night he stood in my bedroom doorway. Don't mean to leave it like that. But nothing else has happened nor has he shown himself the past four months. So it's good for the time being. TL. DR. I sleep with my doors closed. Redditor 8. This happened when I was 11 and visiting a lighthouse in Michigan that was supposedly haunted by a boy. My parents wanted to take a tour with the tour guide, but I wanted to play outside considering we had been touring various sites in the Upper Peninsula that day. No one was around, so my parents ended up letting me play outside the lighthouse while they took a quick tour. As I played outside, a really beat up ball rolled up to my feet. I bent over to pick it up, and as I stood back up I saw a boy standing next to the edge of the lighthouse looking at me. I assumed the ball was his, so I tossed it over to him and he wandered away. I didn't think any about it, but when my parents were done with the tour they asked what I did. I told them something along the lines of I was just wandering around. Oh, and I helped this kid get his ball back. The tour guide was with my parents, and when I mentioned the kid he looked startled because as I mentioned earlier, there was no one other than us at the lighthouse. Only three cars. My parents' car, the tour guide's car, and the car belonging to the person at the front desk. The tour guide asked me to take a look at a picture in the lighthouse. I know this sounds super cliche, but when he showed me the picture, it was the picture of the exact same boy with the exact same beat up ball. Apparently, that kid died at the lighthouse. On a side note, we checked around and there was no boy. So you might be asking me, why was this creepy, especially considering that the boy never scared me or tried to scare me. What creeps me out is that I touched that ball. When it comes to ghost stories, most people only report a ghost not other objects. Assuming that was a ghost with his ball. What the heck did I touch? Also, it felt solid, like a real ball. If it was a ghost ball then how the heck do you explain what I touched? This still bothers me to this day. Redditor 9, my newlywed husband and I moved into our first home. It was really old and run down, good bones but had sat empty for a number of years. We learned after moving in that the previous owner, an elderly lady Mary, had been moved into an old folks home due to dementia and then recently died. Someone had left her funeral pamphlet in our letterbox and her funeral was at the church next to our house. We understand that she had lived there her whole life and never married or had children. The house was opposite a small water hole, I'm not sure how to describe it. The activity started off mild when we moved in. We could hear footsteps like someone running on timber floorboards at all hours of the night. At first we laughed it off. Within two weeks we were joking about our ghost and my mother bought me sage to cleanse the house. She put it on my bed but it disappeared. It reappeared later in a cupboard in an unused room in the house. With it was a very old photograph of a little girl in broad hat in front of our house. Creepy but we were unfazed. We are atheists and didn't bother with the sage. One night, the footsteps intensified. 
We could hear it outside our bedroom door which was open. I looked up to see an apparition of what looked like a boy who was in swimming trunks. I screamed, I was so terrified. The next day we cleansed the house with the sage and the activity stopped. I did some research later and found a new story of a boy who drowned in the waterhole opposite the house who was the same age as Mary. Maybe they were friends. Everything was normal again until we renovated the house. The footsteps were back and the activity intensified. Objects would slide off tabletops and crash into the wall. Small pieces of furniture would be knocked over before our eyes. My baby toddler would scream at something we couldn't see. We found that talking about it or acknowledging it made it worse. My mother came over for a coffee and I was telling her about what was going on. At that very moment a large cookbook flew off the shelf and onto the floor a few feet away. There was so much more but I've tried to forget the whole experience. We decided to make contact with it. This was a very bad idea. I looked up some YouTube videos. I won't go into what I did but I blacked out middle of the day, broad daylight and was sent to a hellish void. I could hear screaming, growling and could smell smoke. It was like a near death experience but instead of a bright light I saw hell. I know that sounds insane and I thought so too. I went to hospital to be assessed thinking that I must be crazy or had a seizure or a brain tumor or something, anything to explain what had happened. I am in fact 100% healthy and sane. No carbon monoxide poisoning, no nothing. Everything stopped, we did not talk about it for fear it would come back and a year later we moved away. My youngest child knew nothing about what had happened and had just begun to talk. As we pulled into our new house she cried and begged for us never to return to the old house again. She said it scared her. Nothing weird or creepy has happened to us since and I have never gone back to our old house. We still own it though. Redditor 10. When I was a child, in my grandma's house, I woke up on the couch one day and saw a gin ghost whatever you wanna call it just standing stare at me. I ran to my family crying and screaming. 15 years later, my moan who had no idea about this tells me how there was a gin ghost in my grandma's house that her, my grandma, two of my uncle all have already seen. Redditor 11, I have a ghost of a boy who died in the 20s in my room and he literally steals things from plan's sight when you look away and then they're gone and the only way to get that object back is to politely ask him for it. It then appears ether somewhere that was searched multiple times for said objects of where it is physically impossible to get there. Redditor 12, I dunno if I'd say I was distressed by this myself, because I'm weird like that, but I bet other people would be. TL, DR, I was attacked in the night by a gibbering creature and to this day cannot convince myself it was a dream. My family moved into a newly built home in a small town that my dad immediately insisted was haunted. None of us experienced anything important, since my mom has previously lived in a house she believed was haunted my sister and I too but we were too little then to remember any of the events she says we experienced. So we waved dad's concerns off. Fast forward 7 or 8 years, I'm around 25 at the time. We've got the house on the market and most of my family has moved out. I live there with a friend who needed a place to stay, and with my little brother staying part time. And our two cats. I've moved into the master bedroom. One night, I'm woken up by the sound of my bedroom door creaking open. I usually leave it open a little so the cats can come and go, so I figure it's one of them. But as I roll over, I realize they're both in bed with me. So I look toward the door and see a humanoid shape slink into my room. I use the term literally, it was trying to stay quiet and keep a low profile. At first I think it's my roommate. She, you know, comes in once in a while. But then I remember she's not home. Mine starts running fast little brother? No, he's not home either. Conclusion, I'm home alone and there's someone in my room. I start to get up, and this figure starts clicking and gibbering at me. No words. My eyes are adjusting, and I'm looking at this feral, hairy, humanoid shape. About four feet tall. Best description I can give is goblinoid. And naked. As I'm realizing I can't identify it, the thing fucking lunges at me. I defend myself with the only option at hand, a super heavy blanket I sleep with. The creature has me on my back, pinned on my bed, and is just wailing on me. Scratches and punches. 
The scratches are running off the blanket heaviest, thickest blanket I've ever had, but I can feel the punches. I've accidentally pulled the blanket over my head, as I was still gripping it when I brought my arms up to protect my face. Here's thing one, I was bullied and left alone a lot as a kid. I overcame a lot of fear and loneliness. I had come to pride myself on my ability to handle threats and situations, and that included the unsubstantiated belief many of us developed that we'd handle a supernatural situation well. And I don't want to let myself down. Every monster has a weakness, and I don't want to let this one do whatever it is doing without a fight. I thrust both arms upwards to knock this creature off balance, and then roll to throw it off me. And as soon as I do, it disappears. I'm sitting up in my bed, sweating and breathing hard. My cats are awake now, looking at me like nothing's wrong. But I can still feel some of the harder hits that creature dealt. Hell, I can smell it. The room is dark, but dead silent, so after a moment I bound out of bed and start turning lights on. Nothing. I went through the whole house and grabbed a knife in the kitchen. Nothing and no one. A dream, right? Well, here's thing too, I'm a lucid dreamer. I know when I'm dreaming. Also, you know how a lot of people say they can't fight or throw punches in dreams? I can. But it takes conscious effort. And I didn't feel any of that. It just didn't feel like a dream. But still, that's the cleanest answer, right? Especially given my cat's lack of panic. Just a dream. And I had myself convinced of that until a few years later, so I didn't tell anyone about it. But my brother and I left the house before it was sold, so my sister moved in and was living there with her boyfriend and their friend. I didn't learn about this until a few years after the house did sell, but they started hearing shit. Including the clicking and gibbering of my feral goblin. This drew many and I told you so from dad. So, to this day 15 years later, I don't know. I am not sure it was a dream. Redditor 13 from Indonesia where paranormal activities are quite normal here. But then I had this one disturbing experience. One day I went into my uncle's home in Geneva. He loves collecting statues or historical stuff. Then I got a duty to take out the trash that day and I went to the basement where his office room at. It's a small room like 2 by 3 meters. Then somehow I saw a statue of a goddess with 4 or 6 arms and the aura in that room just suddenly cold. There were four rooms in the basement. One bedroom, one bathroom, office room, and storage room. Somehow after I took all of the trash, I cannot find the stairs to go back. It's gone, literally, gone. I was quite panicked and then I smell some strange scent, like an ancient flower. I went into the office room and I spoke to the statue. Hey, I am sorry if I disturbed you in ways I cannot imagine. I need to go back upstairs okay? Just let me go. Then after that, I can see the stairs again. But after that, it took me years to be able to go to any basements. Redditor 14, when my son was three he started having dreams and visions of people coming out of holes and dancing in his room. He said they were trying to tell him something. He also said he would wake up to see faces in the dark and they were screaming at him. There were many nights when his screaming would wake me up and I would run into his room. It honestly sounded like he was being attacked. One night in his room he was telling me about one of his experiences I saw a streak of white light move up over his face. Another time I ran into his room and he was up on his knees looking around the room. I didn't say anything and just continued to watch him in the dark. This went on for about 15 minutes and finally he looked at me and he said one word, Manya was apparently his name for whatever spirit he was seeing. Another time on the baby monitor and we heard a loud male voice say stop that. We happened to know a mother and daughter psychic team and enlisted their help. They tuned in and both said they saw an evil old man spirit from the 40s who brought in other souls to make mischief. He also smoked a cigar we often smelled cigar smoke in our hallway outside my son's bedroom. They tried cleansing the house remotely they lived in another city. We thought all was good until one evening we were walking into our dining room to sit down when my son went flying forward into the table. He started crying and said that someone pushed him from behind. We kept our son in our room that night and my wife and I both heard what sounded like an old man making gagging noises from my other son's room he was 11 months old. 
Our friends put together a whole team and they came and cleansed the house. It was quite a process and our neighbors probably thought we were real weirdos but they got the job done. We haven't had any issues in 10 years. It was really scary. Redditor 15, I live on the second floor of a two-story apartment built in 1912, which originally was a mansion for some of the wealthiest in my town. I've had multiple occurrences where I'd be home by myself, and it'd hear whistling. Short tunes, usually only two notes or so, but they were so fucking clear and I could never figure out where it was coming from. My mom often tells me the story of when she was all seep and dreamt of an older woman who seemed to be dressed in a more old-fashioned way slowly walk into her room and sit on her bed. When my mom woke up, she could still feel the pressure of someone sitting at the foot of her bed. When my mom sat up to go use the bathroom, she felt something slowly and gently push her back down onto her bed. Eventually, my mom was able to GRT up out of bed, but she could never figure out WTF happened. Redditor 16, the basement was angry. First night renting a duplex, spouse and I were unpacking and multiple items flew off a shelf. We said duck that shit and went upstairs for the night. This happened multiple times in our four years of living there. We would often get the sense that we were being watched in the basement. It's hard to describe, but the feeling was that we just weren't welcome down there. By coincidence, I later ended up working with a woman who had lived in the place years before me. Her husband killed himself, violently, in that basement. Duck that basement. Redditor 17, my story isn't extremely distressing, but it's halfway there. When I was younger 4th 5th grade I lived in a small house that was really dark and quiet at night. I always woke up around, what it felt like, midnight most nights and would look for something to eat in the kitchen. So one night as per usual, I woke up and went to grab the first slice of bread from the new bread my mom bought that day. The kitchen is completely dark besides from the two small windows that were fogged so no one could look in. There was this small corner around my fridge that was just dark. Like darker than the rest of the kitchen even when there was light hitting it. However, I was partially asleep so I didn't think much of it. So when I went to grab the slice of bread something hit me in the face. I went to wipe it off my face and all I felt were just long, long fingers. I was terrified and ran back to my room and as I ran I could hear and feel something chasing me and I could hear all kinds of things falling behind me as I ran back to my room frightened. When I got to my room I shut my door and felt my eye and it was bleeding. To this day I have a scar. Never have I encountered something that terrifying again. Redditor 18, things just started missing clothes cables stuff either disappear or change places I always blamed it on me forgetting where I put them but it felt wrong and weird till one day it just stopped. I have no explanation to this other than just something someone or whatever was messing with me. Redditor 19, when I was young around 10 I'd often stay up late to watch adult swim or play video games. One night, my cousin had stayed over and we were talking about TV shows like So Weird on Disney, and just general creepypasta stuff. As we are talking, we notice the light in the other room switches on. For context, my room used to be our garage which we split in half to form two rooms that were conjoined by an entryway that I used to hang a bed sheet to act as a door for privacy. Well we didn't think much of it, because you can turn that light on from the main hallway, and maybe someone switched it on by accident. Things got strange when the lights ended up intensifying. It grew so bright it was as if there was a mini sun in the other room. As bright as it was though, none of the light had diffused into my room. We were freaking out, yet somehow built enough courage to get out of bed and walk closer to the hanging bed sheet. As we stepped closer, the TV in the other room switched on and was playing TV static. We froze in horror, unable to see anything besides the light in the other room and the hissing of the TV. Suddenly, the already blinding light pulsed brighter. The TV got louder. The light suddenly turned off. The TV was still hissing at us for a few seconds, the dim blue glow spilling into my room. The room light surged back to full radiance as before, flashing rapidly, then nothing. Total silence. Complete darkness. As if nothing even happened. My cousin and I hid under the covers until morning. That house was haunted. Redditor 20, back when I was in high school I had a friend whose family moved into a new house. Come to find out it was a gateway to hell. Lots of photo, video, 
and even audio from the house. Well the worst one was a picture of a face you saw in a second story window. The worst part was every time we would look at the photo or show someone something bad would happen to my friend. Needless to say, we don't open that photo anymore. Redditor 21, my family has always seen, heard and been around paranormal stuff. I have two that are final proof to me, one is distressing and the other has so few logical explanations. Distressing first, I had a friend that would crash at my place all the time. Slept in the lounge and struggled to sleep. Never said why just complained. My mom asked him if he's seen the lady in white and he said pretty seriously so she is real. Apparently comes into the back door and walks down the passage towards my room or vice versa. Now before this talk happened my GF at the time always woke me up to walk with her to the toilet to stand outside and walk back. I am scared of the dark too but whatever I can do it. Now it was my friend who asked her if she had seen the lady too and they were talking about it. For those curious, I and my sister have seen since. We sleep on the opposite side to my mom. The proof one is in a hallway with no windows we have a whiteboard. It's hung perfectly level, no funny business with the pen tray. South Africa has no rarely ever earthquakes. The door is next to but was closed on this occasion. All was still and calm. My dad and I were talking about the ghosts and what we hear and think when a pen launches off the tray for the whiteboard as if somebody casually swept their hand out from whiteboard to edge of the tray. So the pen flew off horizontally. No cats and nobody was standing within a meter of it. It wasn't violent but like you popped it off onto the floor to annoy somebody and make them pick up. Not that I'm saying that was an intention but the kind of trajectory it took didn't spin so it wasn't an edge catching there are no edges. It was just on the tray in the middle. Redditor 22, I'll keep it short. A voice told me to do something and I obeyed, my life was saved because of this. Redditor 23, it wasn't extremely distressing but it did spook my for a while. I was 12 years old in my home country in Kyrgyzstan and I was at my maternal grandma's house. So there is this little narrow passageway that comes from the back door of the house to the garage we have weird house layouts here. And I was walking through the passageway, I heard a whisper in English people here don't know English that well and the only people who spoke fluent English was me and my brother that said, I know who you are. I turned around and to my horror, I saw no one. So I ran to the garage, exited the garage and went to the kitchen while my heart was beating extremely fast. I told my uncle about it but he didn't take me seriously and laughed it off. To this day, I still don't know what happened. Redditor 24, when I was around 5 years old late 1970s early 1980s, we lived in a haunted house in South Florida. This house was probably built in the 1960s, so not all that old. I can only remember some of the incidents we would often hear footsteps coming from the attic and other loud noises that could not be explained. Sounds of furniture being moved around with nobody in the room. I specifically remember one morning lying in bed, a face appeared on the wall above my bedroom window and repeatedly told me to go to my parents' bedroom. No idea why it wanted me to do that, but I can still remember it plain as day. Apparently my older sister and mother also had several experiences while we lived there. My mom was home alone cleaning the house up right after we moved in. She opened a door to one of the bedrooms and there was a young man standing in there, completely still. She said she didn't feel frightened, but didn't know what to do. She closed the door, waited a minute, and reopened it, and he was gone. I asked how she knew it wasn't a burglar or someone sleeping in here, but she said she just knew he wasn't real. Not sure how to explain that one. Redditor 25, I saw orbs on multiple occasions when I lived in a house in the swamp. I wasn't frightened and didn't think to try to take pictures. Once my cousin was with me and we both saw it. Another time a friend saw it but I didn't. 